good evening everyone metabolic and nutritional diseases in sheep and goat so here i have concentrated only regarding the clinical management and purely regarding the practical aspect how to diagnose a case clinically and how to treat the case polio encephalomalacia it's a very commonly occurring in the field condition very very common in the field conditions i have seen many farms in outbreak some farms will be having 20 or 30 animals 30 animals will be having this type of some like infectious it's not infectious disease but it is a managemental problem it is a because of the nutritional one, nutritional imbalance so what is otherwise called as cerebrocortical necrosis otherwise called as goat polio is due to thiamine deficiency b1 deficiency it is mainly due to the altered human microflora that is excess feeding of carbohydrate and low rates that causes the polio problem when you are giving excess uh, carbohydrate means sudden engorgement of carbohydrate that will lead to acidosis that is another one but here excess amount of carbohydrate the human is adapted to that carbohydrate and when you are feeding with the low roughage when you are feeding that animal with the low roughage naturally what will happen the in the rumen there will be a bacteria they will develop the bacteria bacillus thiaminolytics one bacteria is there they will proliferate they will proliferate when there is low roughage and the excess carbohydrate feeding pattern that will lead to the proliferation of bacillus thiaminolytics in the rumen and this bacteria they will block the synthesis of thiamine so they will block the synthesis of thiamine whenever there is a thiamine availability is very much reduced the animal will go for nervous signs so thiamine is essential for the neurological functions when thiamine is going very much availability is reduced the animal will start showing signs of polio encephalomalacia i mean uh, uh, nervous signs will be noticed so that is the main etiology form so how it occurs in the outbreak so many times when we go for any uh, treat they will say most of the animals 10 or 15 animals showing nervous signs naturally we will be going for infectious origin we have to identify the feed also sometimes a sudden change in the feed low roughage availability high carbohydrate predisposes the vitamin b1 deficiency and uh, excess sulfur whenever there is excess sulfur in the diet that will also will block the absorption that will inhibit the absorption of thiamine when you are treating the animals for toxicity when you are giving amprolim in excess dosage amprolim induced the polio encephalomalacia occurs that you have to keep it in mind sulfur also amprolium excess carbohydrate and lower phage these are the predisposing factors and high molasses urea diet associated they will alter the thiamine status these are the causes or etiology for polio encephalomalacia in household small ruminants sheep and goat how it appears i mean the farmers they will be giving the um, uh, animals the rice gruel or uh, rice gruel water or waste etc like that they used to give daily whenever the animal goes for grazing and come back in the evening they used to give rice gruel rice gruel lightly but the ruminant might have adapted and the availability of roughage will be very much reduced only they will be feeding carbohydrate which naturally the animal will go for polio encephalomalacia like that. here you can able to see the movement of the eyeball movement of the eyeball is the nystagmus is called as nystagmus either it may be exhibited as a vertical nystagmus or horizontal nystagmus so it is a classical sign of polio encephalomalacia so in polio encephalomalacia all other vital signs will be normal temperature will be normal heart rate respiration rate everything will be normal the animal will be having a feeding habit will be there so earlier signs the animal will be having staggering gait the animal will be having staggering gait once you saw the animal the hind limb is abducted the hind limb is abducted and walking started walking you have to think about the early signs of polio encephalomalacia when you give some plant materials or uh, grass material or forages the animal will take the feed there won't be any reduced in appetite there won't be any uh, reduction in appetite or anything it will be taking feed and all but when you make the animal walk it will walk slowly and uh, with the abducted leg and lowering of the head in the early stages and there will be incoordination the animal will be staggering gait and incoordination in nation will be there when you touch the animal suddenly it will fall down and then involuntary convulsions will be there there is no tonic clonic convulsions there is involuntary pedaling like convulsions it is important point you noted that involuntary pedaling like convulsions will be noticed in polio encephalomalacia and you can able to see the nystagmus it is very much obvious and it will give you a clue for diagnosis the nystagmus very much obvious so in all the animals you have to see the mucous membrane and also the eyeball whether it is fixed or moving eyeball i mean nystagmus is present or not in out so when you give some plant material the animal will be taking feed when you make the animal stand it will be having wide base stand and see the involuntary pedaling will be there so another one important pathology one classical uh, clinical examination is that when you place the animal to one side the animal will turn back to the other side that is a classical sign of polio encephalomalacia see here this another case 
it is in the channel recommend see but uh, sometimes it may be looking like you, you may be differential diagnosis anemia and all you will be thinking in your mind but when you go close and you can see the movement of the eyeball see the movement of the eyeball is there this is a classical sign of polio in sapulo malaysia so rumen is deaf in nature there is no diarrhea no fluid passing sound so acidosis is ruled out so here also is another one case of uh, polio in sapulo malaysia nystagmus is there So here, the animal is in the lateral recumbent seat. Pedaling is there. Tongue consistency is normal. When you make the animal to rotate in another side, see, it is trying to get up in the other side. See, it is a classical sign of polio encephalitis. For example, if it is a case of intoxication, or if it is a case of any other case, acidosis, if you make the animal rotate, I mean, if you make the animal put it on other side, it will lie on the same other side itself. It won't try to get up. If it is trying to get up, it is a clear case of. Polyan supplementation. They can treat it according. The animal is later recommended. See, when you put the animal on the other side, it's trying to get up. That's all. Sometimes you may be noticing the animal is having bloat. That bloat is due to the lateral recommended. See, when you make the animal sitting in the central recommended, see, naturally the bloat will be getting relieved. So no need of giving any anti-bloat agents or any other uh, treatment for uh, separate uh, treatment for bloat and all. See, the animal is having obvious the bloat is raised the head is there, unable to bear weight. See, all the four limbs are not placed on the ground. You can able to see that. Limbs which are elevated from the ground. See the fore limb and hind limb. It is elevated. That indicates CNS involvement. Whenever there is a CNS involvement, the fore limb and hind limb will be just slightly elevated from the ground level. That will give you as the clue and for easy diagnosis. So nystagmus, this type of involuntary pedaling, convulsions, and when you turn back, if you turn the animal to one side, it will get back to the same side. And uh, vital signs are normal, feeding habit, everything normal. These are all the Things which gives you a clue for polio encephalo Malaysia. You can treat it well with the diamond, 10 milligram per kg body weight. Either you can give IM or IV. So repeat it at a six hours interval. And since it is impractical for doing it at six hours interval, you can even go for up to 40 milligram per kg body weight, and you can give IM or IV. Don't give any big complex injection, direct IV. That will lead to anaphylaxis, and anaphylactic shock will be there. So always mix it with the normal saline, and give IV. Don't give any liver extract preparations, IV. So that will lead to anaphylaxis. So use a diamond preparation. If you are giving IV, mix it with an NS and give slow IV, or you can give intramuscular injection. Don't give liver extract any liver extract preparations intramuscular. And in some needy cases, we'll be giving 20% dexos and steroids. When it is a delayed case, then it will be going for dexamethasone. And mannitol. So you can give one to two ml per kg body weight in whenever it is a needed case. Here the response to the treatment is very good when it is presented earlier. If it is a delayed case, if it is presented one week later after the onset of symptoms, they are bringing the animal to you uh, after one week or ten days, the response will be very much poor. It won't respond to the treatment because the name itself is the cerebrocortical necrosis. Irreversible brain damage will lead to permanent uh, lateral ligament stiffness. The animal won't respond. Earlier presentation, the response will be very much drastic. Very good improvement will be noticed. So differential diagnosis will be seeing uh, the cerebrospinal pneumothoraces, cumbering. In Kumri, the hind limb paralysis will be most predominant, and uh, the other signs will not be present. Only the hind limb paralysis will be there. Then it will very much respond to treatment with ivermectin. Then semurosis, the animal will be dull and depressed, and uh, uh, that is due to the presence of the tapeworm. I mean uh, that you can uh, uh, differentiate. And the listeriosis, that I will show some of the videos. In listeriosis, the animal will be having circling movement and facial paralysis. Will be there. Here there is no facial paralysis. The menace reflex is absent in one side. And they see the ear; it is drooping. The droopiness of the ear is there. Menace reflex is absent. The lips are partially open. There is no proper closure of the lips. The lips are partially open. And uh, one side ptosis is there. Menace reflex is absent. Droopiness of the ears is there. The animal may be having circling movement. Like that. These are all the signs of classical signs of listeriosis. So you have to differentiate polio encephalomalacy and the listeriosis. Here you have to supplement the penicillin or shifter penicillin. And penicillin can be given with. I mean, uh, time in supplementation is can be given. See, menace reflex is absent, and uh, the fodder is uh, retained in the oral cavity itself. The ear is droopiness is that when you give some fodder, the fodder will be retained in the uh, oral cavities. Otherwise, the animal will be chewing, cut dropping will be noticed. Otherwise, the animal will be keeping the fodder material in the oral cavity itself. These are all the signs of listeriosis. So you cannot miss the case of polyencephalomalacia, and uh, you can very well treat it with time in alone.